Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over how to find the empirical formula of a hydrocarbon through combustion analysis. So a hydrocarbon is anything that is carbon and hydrogen, that kind of compound. And combustion analysis is just a method for analyzing hydrocarbons. The general reaction for a combustion reaction is that you have your hydrocarbon plus oxygen will always make CO2 and water. And so usually what you're told with these problems are, for example, I've got 10 grams of my hydrocarbon. It produced 40 grams of CO2 and 30 grams of water. And it wants you to find the formula of this, the empirical formula. And so what confuses students is the CO2 and the water. What do we do with those numbers? And if you think back to the law of conservation of mass, matter can never be created or destroyed. So all of the carbon atoms went to CO2. All of the hydrogen atoms from the hydrocarbon went to water. And so we can use these values to figure out how many carbon atoms were in the original sample and how many hydrogen atoms were in the original sample. That's what we're trying to find, the amount of carbon from the original and the amount of hydrogen from the original. We don't care about the oxygen atoms because that is not a part of this hydrocarbon. So that's the general formula. Some hydrocarbons will have carbon, hydrogen, and I'm just going to write X and Y because they could be any subscript, and oxygen, or they could have carbon and hydrogen and nitrogen, um, and maybe an O in there as well. And so it's still going to be the same general formula. Your oxygen will still be a reactant, and you will still make CO2 and water. Now, if your hydrocarbon has nitrogen in it, you might make nitrogen gas. Um, you have to make something in the product that has nitrogen in it. But it's the same general idea. So I'm going to work a combustion problem with a CHO compound. Um, and how would we solve for that? So here is my general reaction. And we were told that you had 10 grams of this sample and it produced 19.10 grams of CO2 and 11.73 grams of water. And we want to find the empirical formula for this. The first thing we want to do is take our mass of CO2 and find how many moles of CO2 were made. So 19.10 grams of CO2 You'll divide it by carbon dioxide's molar mass, which is 44.01. And that's going to equal 0.4341 moles of CO2. Now, when I look back at my original hydrocarbon, I want to find how many moles of carbon were made because all of the carbon went to CO2. All of this went there. It couldn't go to water because water doesn't have carbon in it. And so I can figure out how many moles of carbon atoms were in the original sample. So I can do that by saying I know I made this many moles of CO2 and every one molecule or mole of CO2 will have one mole of carbon atoms in them. So that tells me my original sample, what was it, four one, had that many moles of carbon because all of the carbon went from here to here. Okay, that's the first value I'll need. My second one is the water. And so what do I want from the water? I want the hydrogen because all of this hydrogen came from here. All of this came from here. H is not anywhere else in the reaction. And so I'll take my mass of water, divide it by the molar mass of water, and that gives me how many moles of water were made. And that is, I need to 
fitted. 0.651 moles of water. Now, if this is moles of water, I'm trying to figure out how many hydrogen atoms are in this because all of the hydrogen atoms from the hydrocarbon went to the water. They all went there, law of conservation of mass. Now, this is a little bit different than the CO2 because of the formula. Every one water molecule has two hydrogen atoms in it because it's H2O. And so to get moles of hydrogen atoms, I'm going to have to double it because one of these, that's subscript. And when you double it, I'm going to get 0 0.1302 moles of H. So now I know from my original sample that 0.4341 moles were carbon, and I know how many moles of hydrogen I have. Oxygen is the last thing we need to figure out this empirical formula. However, I can't do what I did here to solve for oxygen because O2, like the air we breathe, was also a reactant. So some of this O and some of this O came from here, but some of it also came from here. Um, so we can't just solve for moles of oxygen like we did carbon and hydrogen because carbon and hydrogen only came from here. So there's the difference. But the problem did tell us that we had 10 grams of my CHO. And I know how many moles of C and how many moles of H that were in this. And we can go from moles to grams, can't we? So let's do that really fast. We're going to take our moles of carbon and our moles of hydrogen and change them to grams. Oh, that should be flipped. One mole of C to 12.01 grams of C. One mole of H to 1.008 grams of H. So that tells me 5.21 grams of carbon and that many moles of hydrogen weigh 1.31 grams. So if I had 10 grams of this to start out and 5.21 grams were carbon and 1.31 grams were oxygen, how many, sorry that should say hydrogen, how many grams were oxygen? Easy, you just subtract. 10 minus 5.21 minus 1.31. We had 3.48 grams of O. And so we're trying to find the empirical formula. That was the point of the problem. An empirical formula, you need to get moles of each element and divide by the smallest number of moles. So we need to go ahead and change that to moles. So divide it by 16. And we get that there were 0 0.2175 moles of O. Now, looking at my three elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, which one is the smallest number? Oxygen is. So I'm going to divide everything by 0.2175. So that's going to leave me 1 O. When I take this and divide it by that, That's going to give me 1.99 or 2 C's, and I take the moles of hydrogen and divide it by that. It's going to give me 5.98 or 6 H's. Now we're going to write these in the correct order, so it becomes C2H6O, and that's the empirical formula for this hydrocarbon. So it's a lot of steps. Again, you have to look at your original sample. Take your grams of both products, CO2 and water, and figure out how many moles of carbon are in this and how many moles of hydrogen are in this because of the law of conservation of mass. And don't forget that 
we're trying to find moles of C and moles of H. That's why we doubled the H down here, because I want moles of H, not moles of water. And here is just a one-to-one, -one because one CO2 has one carbon in it. And then, once you know how many carbon and hydrogen atoms you have, you can find the grams of carbon and hydrogen, and then how many grams of oxygen are from the hydrocarbon. We couldn't use these masses to find the grams of oxygen because oxygen is also a reactant. So this oxygen and this oxygen come from here and from here. So that wouldn't work. But it works like this because the C and the H can only go to CO2 and water. And then once you have grams of oxygen, you could change it to moles and then divide by the smallest number of moles to get your empirical formula. I hope this video helped and helped explain why we're doing the things that we do.